Our next guest says he writes church music for people who don't go to church. <laughs> and you'll probably know him from his hit mega song, Awesome, and his newest chart topper, War. Now he's helping everyone celebrate with his new album, Any Given Sunday. Pastor Charles Jenkins, welcome to Arise 360. Thanks so much for having me. Definitely, because we've got to talk about war. It's the newest chart topper. It's you know, going across all the radio stations. But what are you going up in battle against? <laughs> you know, uh, everybody's in a fight for victory in some way, somehow, whether it's for your faith, for family, for forward, for a whole lot of people, for fitness. Mm -hmm. so they yeah. said they're trying to lose weight. Yes. I mean, and so it, it's a fight song. It's that empowerment, that inspirational prayer to uplift you and get you going so you can get to that victory. I like nice. it on the treadmill. I'm like, yeah! Yeah! Yeah. 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 Right workout song. <laughs> yeah. And War, of course, is on the new album, Any mm -hmm. Given Sunday. So tell us about the album. So Any Given Given Sunday, it is a celebration of every amazing, powerful, impactful moment we experience any given Sunday in, in a worship setting. And so our whole commitment was to bring the best of anything we could ever experience uh, on a Sunday morning to every single day of your week. And so the album is full of power and inspiration and, and, and impact to help you go to that next level. Yeah. Very nice. I mean, it's going to be some shouting in there too, huh? <laughs> Man, it's going to be some <laughs> shouting and pushing and fighting and, and hopefully it'll lead you to a place of progress right. and right. take you higher. All right, motivational. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Well, you say it's like a live worship experience. So how did you execute? Was it like a live performance during the concert or in church service? How did you do it? It was a live recording. Oh, wow. uh, we recorded the entire album live and uh, brought in some amazing, amazing people, very celebrated gospel artists like John P. Key, mm. Byron Cage, Jonathan McReynolds, who uh, has done some great stuff with NDRE and a host of others. Nice. And you say that you make this music for people who don't go to church, church music for people who don't go to church. What do you mean by that? You know, um, th there's a passage in Matthew 28 in Scripture where Jesus invites us to go to where people mm -hmm. are. And I think while we're all invited to uh, come to church, my commitment is to create simple, singable music that can be relatable, that maybe the person who might not come to church might not listen to gospel music to watch. Lots of people you know yeah. say that they listen to Awesome every single day mm -hmm. to start their day, hip-hop artists and actors and actresses. The goal is, is to meet people wherever they are and, and to try to be a blessing. Well, you mentioned awesome. It definitely touched a lot of people. I don't think there's a church in the world that has not had that song playing there. It was spent 22 weeks at the top of the Billboard charts. It won you a Grammy. When you were writing that song, did you know it was going to become such a hit? No. No, you had no idea. Not at all. <laughs> I, I wrote it in my bedroom after a long day, just kind of coming down, and, and the idea, uh, the word awesome came to mind, and I kind of ended up, it was like I was in a dialogue with God, so to speak, kind of put thoughts in my mind. I was like, who is awesome? Uh, my God is awesome. Why is he awesome? He can move mountains. Keep me in the valley. Hide me from the rain. And that's that just kind of how it came. I shared it that Sunday on church, uh, in our church service. And the place went nuts, and wow. the rest is kind of history. And 22 weeks, that's a long time. Mm -hmm. No, it was crazy. I mean, it was my first single and uh, first album, and, and to, to debut number one and to stay there for, it was nothing I was thinking about. I just wanted to, <laughs> you know. You just made some good music. At the way, yeah. I was trying to, to just lift some people up and, yeah. and have, have a good time at the same time. Now, you mentioned hip-hop artists earlier mm -hmm. could listen to an album like this any sure. given Sunday. Would you ever get together with an artist of another genre, so a, a hip-hop artist perhaps, or a rock artist, sure. or pop? Mm -hmm. Sure. Who? Who well, are some of the I, artists you'd love to work with? You know, uh, uh, a super dear friend of mine is, is a, a iconic guy, Dougie Fresh. Oh, of oh, course. Yeah. Yeah. We, we all know yeah, Dougie, he's a yeah. Dear friend. So we've been talking about doing some stuff together. That'd and then there great. are a host of, a, of, a, of amazing people. Uh, I'm a Katy Perry fan. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Aren't we, we all? She, she's Katie. a, she's yeah. a pop queen. <laughs> she right. is. And uh, it, it's, a, it's a laundry list. I'd love to do, mm -hmm. do, some, do some work with. 
definitely. Right. Now, you're a successful singer, songwriter now, but is it true that you at first wanted to be a professional dancer? That's very interesting. Where did you get that? Come on. <laughs> I know some people. <laughs> you are the media. Right? <laughs> wow. Yeah, I, uh, as, a, as a kid, you know, um, I, at all of the parties, we, I, I would turn it out. One of my best friends on the planet is a movie producer, a guy named William Packer. Of okay. course. And, yeah. uh, so, so we had a dance group. Uh oh. And uh, we're from the same hometown. <laughs> the two of you together. Yes. How many yes. of you guys were in the group? It was like four or five of us. Oh. What were you called? I can't remember. Oh. But we man. would turn your party upside down. Yeah. What Did were you all the high school what talent, kind of music? talent shows. Back then it was Bobby Brown. Yeah. Uh, okay, okay. Every little every little step, you Definitely. know. With, Did you have the haircut? The, uh, I, did, I did a little Gumby. The, I had some Gumby, Gumby action. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I did that with uh, ABC, another bad oh, creation. Now, everybody yeah. has a staple move. Did you have like a staple uh, pop block move or something? You know, uh, I come from the MC Hammer days. Oh, so you think you have the pants, we, didn't we, you? We, 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 oh. we had some of that going oh. running, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you had the pants as well. Yes, we CD. all had the pants. You had yeah. to. You had as to, required, right? required, right? Y'all know about the pants? Oh, we had them. I had them, too. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Second I don't edition. Have the pants. I okay. <laughs> I don't have the pants. Now, another thing a lot of people don't know about you, you're a pianist. So mm. when did you... Well, you can play pretty well. You know, I took seven years of classical piano, and you know, when I'm writing a song, I can I can get you to where you need to be. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I run from the whole pianist idea and concept, but I'm very Why? glad to be connected to some people who can do it. Okay. I used to could play once upon a time, but yeah. I retired. You retired. Yeah. But one of the things you didn't retire from is from pastoring. When did you first get the calling to be a pastor? Oh, I started preaching the gospel when I was 16 years old. Wow. Maybe around 14. Six, wow. I started thinking about it in my hometown. It was a phenomenon. It was like maybe 20 young guys who mm -hmm. were all preachers. And uh, at 22, I was named the successor to uh, the Church Fellowship Chicago that I lead in Chicago. Mm -hmm. yeah. My predecessor, very close with Martin Luther King, and mm -hmm. it's just really special Reverend guy. Reverend Clay Evans. Yes, yeah. iconic. Yeah, and he's definitely. been a mentor to you, so what has that experience been like? He's like a father. He's the, he's the godfather, affectionately known as the godfather, yeah. and, you know, with just a wealth of wisdom experience. He did it for 50 years, mm -hmm. uh, one of the first African Americans to be on television. Uh, wow. uh, as, as a televangelist and just, I mean, he's iconic. And so to be able to sit at the feet of someone of such great and profound wisdom, it, it's a huge blessing and a huge honor all yeah. at the same time. So what do you enjoy doing most now, singing or preaching? Or dancing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> dancing. <laughs> <laughs> my house, we dance in my house every single do you day. Really? It seems With like, the family? Oh, yeah, my wife. Oh. And uh, we have three beautiful children, and so uh -huh. we split up, and it's a dance contest getting ready for school. Okay, and who, who wins? wins? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who, who usually wins? wins? Um... Whoever's on my team. Oh, see. Uh, of course, yes, <laughs> my wife would say wife. otherwise. Yeah, we're yeah, going to yeah. ask her about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, next time you have to bring the whole family back and have a dance contest with us. That'd be fun. Yes. And until we'll then. Win. Yes. Exactly. Will you really? No, yeah, watch kidding. out now. I got you. I got you. All right. But until then, we want to make sure everyone knows that the new album is out March 17th, any given Sunday. Go check it out. It's hot. Trust us. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank, Thank you so much for having me. And we'll be right back. Yeah.